On the final day of the 2021 Aurora Prize events held in Venice, the latest Aurora Dialogues took place at the Murad Rafael College, an Armenian educational establishment steeped in history. The open discussion was attended by members of the Selection Committee, as well as the Aurora Prize laureates and humanitarians, and kicked off by Selection Committee Chair Lord Aradarzi, who moderated the discussion. The first part of our discussion is going to be about the impact of the pandemic uh, across the globe and not just the health impact, we're going to talk about all impact. The second session, I'm delighted to say, is going to be chaired by Nubar, who is going to address mostly about what lessons learned and the building the resilience. Ruben Vartanyan reflected on the pandemic's impact, but also on the role of fellow co-founder Nubar Afeyan and how he oversaw Moderna and its vaccine drive. I think it's uh, what's happened with all of us during the last two years was hurting everyone, not only uh, the people who've been involved in healthcare. Uh, you know, we met with Nubar 20 years ago. It's amazing how run, time is running quickly. And um, when we met in Harvard and talk about the future of Armenia, we talk about the important how the future of Armenia linked to the future of the world. And when we started our Royal Mental Initiative, we thought about this link again. And two years ago, when uh, one and a half years ago, when our uh, Moderna just uh, became one of the core driver of the health savings of lives of millions of people. Uh, I'll just say that I think there are, you know, painful parallels between the topics many of the laureates deal with, which is atrocities and, and, and man's kind of man-inflicted atrocities and what we're witnessing today. I actually think that the pandemic with this many deaths globally is equivalent to uh, the type of you know a, a crime against humanity. Just so happens that this is a virally induced crime. As this unique forum continued, Mary Robinson and Paul Pullman discussed the relationship between COVID and inequality. The problem with COVID-19 is that it exacerbates all of the inner inequalities and brings out the intersectionality between them. 150 million people more pushed back into poverty because of COVID. 1.7 billion vulnerable people, still 4.5 billion people living on less than $5 a day. Dele Olojede spoke on the issue of misinformation, whilst Arman Voskercian spoke on the issue of basic supplies in the developing world. When the pandemic hit, there was no one guiding the public conversation in any way because everybody now had equal access. We've achieved perfect equality, which meant that lots of rumors and falsehoods we're just crossing through the system. Now let's take as an example Africa, which represents uh, uh, roughly 18-19% of global population. But if we look now to medical devices and technologists, uh, uh, Africa represents only 1.3%. Marguerite Barankitze and Paul Farmer explain the need to reform international organizations and the changing attitudes of the global population. UNHCR communicates that there is not enough food. Food supplies are not arriving. And nobody was ready for this. I mean, how can the people in the camps survive if they can't get out because of confinement? Uh, we finally have a moment, perhaps, when uh, large fractions of the population understand that we have to invest in health systems. But that's really the, the, the primary bright spot. Mirza Dinai and Fartun Adan expanded on the way COVID affected conflict-torn countries. After pandemic, uh, the challenge became uh, a thousandth time more than before because uh, first the restrictions of movement from countries to country. We run an organization in Somalia and in Somalia we have um, crisis um, and we have a conflict for the war and top of that we have a corona so it was very challenging. Leima Bowie and Bernard Kushner spoke about the need to bring the focus back on people and communities. Everything that we've done from technology to this to that to the other was for the greater good of people but somehow 
we've managed to take people out of the equation and it's all about what how the world can look good car tout ça est this is also a highly political problem we have tried to disseminate for a long time with the creation of doctors without borders with the, i mean we wanted them all to focus on medicine as a policy to have a better life worldwide and finally julien lusenge and shirin abadi raised the issue of impact on women and the strain covid has put on them we fight on a daily basis for freedom and democracy and many uh, uh, comforts that you have in Europe. However, as the saying goes, whatever does not kill you will make you stronger. We have to start from the bottom. We have to see how the women of the communities can be connected with you women up there. And this connection must be built. This exchange of thoughts and ideas amongst people with different expertises and walks of life showed that lessons were learned from the COVID pandemic. Now it remains to apply these solutions.